name is Lior. I'm from the uh, Rabin Medical Center in Israel. And I'm going to talk about the VLAP, which is uh, manufactured by the Victorious Medical Technologies. These are my declaration of interests. So I'm, I'm sure you're convinced by now that heart failure is a big problem, right? And what's really typical about heart failure is the high rate of uh, exacerbations and admissions. So following one admission for heart failure, you have a chance of 27% for another one within one month, which is the highest of any other medical condition. And after six months, it's over 50%. This translates to around 11% mortality in each admission and $43 billion dollars each year in the U.S. mostly for heart failure exacerbations, for acute events. And the thing is, we think we can estimate and prevent these by physical examination and the non-invasive methods, but when tested, these were, these were a total failure. Body weight, for example, has 9% sensitivity for a, a new acute heart failure exacerbation. So we really cannot predict it non-invasively. What about invasive heart, heart failure monitors? Where, well, as you know, the, uh, the cardiomems was uh, uh, a pivot in that, in that world, and the, uh, the trial, the champion trial, has shown 37% reduction in heart failure exacerbations in the, uh, in the champion study. But these are right-sided pressure sensors, and they're passive. So you're getting a surrogate of the pressure within the heart, and you're missing out on a lot of things, especially in patients with high pulmonary, pulmonary vascular resistance. So the VLAP is a battery-less, uh, it's a novel wireless left-side pressure sensor which directly assesses pressure within the heart. It is fully digital, which makes it, uh, uh, takes it apart from the other competitors, meaning it, it actually has a computer within the device and uh, does all the digital processing of the pressure and the drift compensation within the heart before it even transmits it. The way it works is we implant it in a uh, dedicated delivery system which we have devised in a transfemoral approach and uh, performed transeptally. The sensors are on the left atrial pressure side, uh, left atrial side uh, and the uh, communication and power within the right atrium. The sensor is really small. It, does, uh, it is 3 millimeters in diameter and 16 in length. And it is coupled with an external unit. The unit is, like I said, the sensor is batteryless. It, first of all, it powers it. So a push, upon the push of the button, it, tr it starts transmitting uh, data after relaying energy to the uh, sensor by conductive coupling. And then after that, what you're capturing is these beautiful pictures of hemodynamics. It's high definition waveforms of actual cath lab data with all the V waves and the uh, A waves and all of that from home. So we've already begun our first in human study and this is the Vector HF implanted in, in seven patients so far in the UK, Germany, and Italy, and all our Neocard Association class three patients who have been repeatedly admitted for exacerbations and or have high BNP. So far we've seen that the results are the device is safe, we have had no complications, we were getting acute, accurate remote measurements from these patients, and uh, an important point is here that we're starting to get a lot of data from these sensors. One of the things that you have to do is to be able to recognize which part of the data is actually important and you have to have it in a very concise manner, otherwise you're going into the curse of the abundance of data, right? And so we have an AI algorithm uh, platform that actually helps concisely report the data in terms of mean left atrial pressure, the rhythm, of course we're getting that, and personal trends, we can, st and I'll show you an example or two of how actual patients react differently to our, the medications that we're giving, right? So we're, we have real-time data on that, and we can detect a lot of comorbidities and uh, pathological events, such as arrhythmias, uh, we can look at uh, diastolic dysfunction, and so on and so forth, valvular dysfunction, all of that you're getting when, you're, when you actually have hemodynamics at home. So some of the unique events that we already detected include the response to medications. On the upper left side, you can see what happened when we gave a new set of diuretics to these patients, and we were getting transmission of data, um, and we can see the actual benefit. But not all patients react the same. On the lower left, uh, the response to CRT, we modified the, the settings, and you know, one, one mind-boggling opportunity for these things is to actually optimize therapy for these um, not only medications, but device-based therapeutics because we can actually see real-time data on hemodynamics. 
Of course, we have one patient who has reduced compliance, and that's not surprising. And uh, as you can tell on the upper right, some days he's taking his medications, the other is not so much, and we can see the trends and verify and confirm it with the patients. And one really interesting uh, opportunity was to diagnose sleep apnea. One of the things that happens with sleep apnea is that there's an exaggerated uh, respiratory variation in pressure within the heart. And we've seen that in one patient and suspected it and confirmed it with polysomnography, and now the patient is, is treated with CPAP. So you can see just some of the examples of what we've seen with the first seven patients and how interesting it is to have real data from home. So there are a few advantages of this device versus the competitors, uh, as I'm obliged to say, of course. But it does really give you left-sided data, which is so far not available for, from any other device. Um, it is a fully digital platform. And also the fact that we can sense pressure within the heart, one of the deepest organs in the body, required us to, to get to that technology. And, that, and there is no such technology in terms of being able to transmit and measure pressure within the heart. So it's very scalable, meaning we can use it in other clinical applications. So the future of heart failure, I believe, is here. Uh, that's a big gong. Uh, um, so we're getting direct intracardiac information for the first time. We're getting true hemodynamics with, in an ambulatory fashion, but cath, uh, cath lab-like outcomes. This is an early alert system as well for all sorts of pathologies and assisted by artificial intelligence, which gives us the three options of 24-7 remote hemodynamic data. I'll be quick. Reduction of admissions, which is the main goal, but this is true personalized medicine, and I would argue that it is the future of heart failure care. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. I know that's hard. That's part of the job. But keep, keep, the, keep the microphone this way. One minute question. A very quick question. Uh, do you need to change the battery, and how often, how long does it last? There is no battery. That's what's beautiful about it. There is an antenna. I, I had very little time to show it. There is an antenna that surrounds the device, and it is, it is remotely powered. So you don't need to change the, the battery. Yeah. Any potential disadvantage compared to CardioMEMS or the Endotronics device? Of course not. Measuring PA? Well, so, you know, ideally, and I believe in the future, we will have multiple sensors. Uh, one on the right atrium side, which would give us right heart-sided uh, pressures. And, um, you know, the disadvantage is that you do have to go to a transeptal procedure. Um, but it's fair to say that many medical centers, tertiary medical centers, are feeling quite comfortable with transeptal. And this is a fairly simple one. The location is not really important. You have to be in the foramen of valor. Thank you very much. Great applause to you. Thank you.